Hello, I'm Larry Wilson, and welcome to the December 2006 broadcast. Today, we're going to conclude our study on the seven trumpets. We have already examined the first four trumpets, and we've already touched on the fifth trumpet. So let's do a short review on the fifth trumpet with what we have covered, and then we'll proceed. I want to remind you that about two-thirds of the way through the Great Tribulation, that's about two and a half years, and you might remember that 890 days is two-thirds of the 1,335 days. God holds back the devil for two-thirds of the time. Then the devil will be released from the spirit realm or the abyss to physically appear before the people on earth. I want to take you to a little graphic chart that I want you to look at to see if you can understand what John saw in the book of Revelation. In Revelation 12, he saw the great red dragon and his angels, and I have them represented as lesser stars here. They were cast out of heaven. The Bible says in Revelation 12 that the great red dragon, that ancient serpent, the devil or Satan, he was cast out of heaven because of his rebellion, and he was cast into the earth. Now, you re must remember that back in John's day, see, this is John right here watching. Back in John's day, the earth was thought to be a, flat, uh, a, a flat plate. And um, underneath the earth, they believed the fires of hell burned, and the volcanoes were just simply chimneys for the fires that burned underneath this great plate. The earth was flat, like a plate, like a basin, or else the oceans would have drained away off into outer space. So what, the way God represented this to John was that the devil, who was once in heaven, he was cast out on Resurrection Sunday, and he was cast into the earth. And we've uh, talked about how that happened on Resurrection Sunday already. And now he is not in heaven, but under the earth. And here he is with his angels. And I have a little picture of him here throwing another timber on the fires of hell. <laughs> He's under the earth. And then um, he is called in Revelation 9, the angel king of the abyss. But at the fifth trumpet, here's the fifth trumpet, the angel sounding the fifth trumpet, and you can see the angel has the key in his hand. The fifth trumpet, the devil is given the key to the abyss, and he comes up out of the earth, out of the abyss, and here he masquerades as the Lamb of, uh, the Lamb of God. He's pretending to be Jesus. But you can tell by his tail and his feet and his two horns, as he's described in Revelation 13, that this isn't the lamb, this is Lucifer. <laughs> You'll have to deal with my... Um, see, I took the feet off the dragon here, and I put them in sheep's clothing. So when the devil comes up out of the, fifth, out of the abyss at the fifth trumpet, he masquerades as God. And the Bible says he will come up out of the abyss and he will be the eighth king. And then he will be on earth for about a year, 445 days. And then at the second coming, this is the Lamb of God. This is Jesus. And Jesus will destroy the body, that the physical body that Satan was given when he came out of the abyss. That will be burned up in the fire, but the devil himself will be sent back to the abyss with his angels, and he will be chained for 1,000 years. And you know how the Bible says the wicked will cry out for the rocks and the mountains to fall upon them, to hide them from the face of the Lamb that sits on the throne. So what I want you to see, now I'm going to back up a little bit on this. I want you to see that here Satan once was in heaven, now is not in heaven, he's in the spirit realm, and at the appointed time he's going to come up out of the abyss, he's going to be visible for a while, about a year, a little more than a year, and then when Jesus comes, 
The body that he took will be destroyed, but the devil himself will be put back into the abyss and chained there with his angels for a thousand years. Okay, I, I just want you to, to have that story and that whole idea in mind because we're going to be talking today about the physical appearing of the devil claiming to be God. The Bible says that the devil is going to masquerade as God. He's going to perform great signs and wonders. And he will torture, torture an obstinate group of people that refuse to recognize that he is actually God. I call this group of people the non-religious wicked. The non-religious wicked. Let's go back to the computer screen. In the previous broadcast, I explained that in terms of submission to God, there are three types of people. We'll put an S there. Three types of people. There are the saints. There are the religious wicked. Now, the religious wicked are people like the Sadducees and Pharisees in Christ's day. These are people who really uh, are claimed to be religious, but actually they are just wicked people practicing religion. So, there are three types of people. The saints, the religious wicked, and the non religious wicked. The non-religious wicked. The non-religious wicked is um, self-explanatory. This group of people refuses to acknowledge or worship any god. And we could say that many scientists uh, are in this group. Now, I'm not saying that all scientists are evil just because they don't believe in God. I'm just simply saying that there are many people who are non-religious with wicked hearts. There are three group, groups of people. And so you've got to keep these three groups in mind as we go through Revelation 9. I'm going to read my commentary on this in a verse-by-verse -verse, uh, explanation because I want you to see that the fifth trumpet is all about torturing the non-religious wicked. Satan comes... And obviously, he can't hurt the saints. I'll show you why in just a minute. And he's not going to hurt the people that are following him, so he's only going to torment and eliminate this group of people on earth called the non-religious wicked. Okay, Revelation 9.1. My commentary is, I'm inserting this as we go. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet in heaven's temple. That's where these angels sound their trumpets. And John says, my attention was directed toward earth, and I saw an angelic star, an angelic star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. Lucifer was once the brightest angel in heaven, but he was cast out of heaven at the speed of light, Jesus said, because of his rebellion against God's authority. This star, that is Lucifer, was given the key to the shaft of the abyss, where he and his demons have been imprisoned since their expulsion from heaven. Verse 2, when he, that is Lucifer, opened the abyss, John says there were so many demons ascending from the abyss that they looked like a dense cloud of smoke, and the smoke rose from it that is, this hole in the ground, the abyss, like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. This great horde of demons rose out of the earth, and they were so thick and so dense that it looked like smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, notice I put this in red letters, and out of the smoke, locusts came down upon the earth. Notice the direction of travel. They came down. Lucifer and his angels will come down out of the sky upon the earth. And from a distance... John says, these horde of demons look like a dense cloud of smoke. 
As they drew nearer to earth, the demons looked something like locusts, creatures with wings, as they came down upon the earth. And these demons were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. Now verse 4, they were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree. They were told not to harm the physical elements of earth, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Now they can't hurt the saints. They're not allowed to hurt those who have been sealed. In other words, the devil and his angels can't hurt those who have been sealed. And of course, they won't hurt those who believe that the devil is Almighty God. So the devil and his angels will torture those who stand in opposition, the wicked that is. The devil and his angels will torture those wicked people, the non-religious wicked, who stand in opposition to the blasphemous claims that the devil will make. The non-religious wicked will consist of scientists, communists, agnostics, and many teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put that in there. The non-religious wicked will be those who are in rebellion. That's why I inserted the many teenagers here. Uh, to the blasphemous claims of the devil. And they will be tortured, painfully tormented. And this intimidation will cause many of the non-religious wicked to buckle and to confess, yes, the devil is almighty God. In other words, many of the non-religious wicked are going to yell, uncle. However, there will be some of the non-religious wicked to finally wake up and see that there is a true God and a false God. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Revelation 9, 5. The demons were not given power to kill the non-religious wicked, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony the victims suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. And I can tell you, that is searing pain. If you've ever been stung by a scorpion, you will not forget it. Verse 6, during those days of torment, men and women will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. I mean, we're talking some very grievous suffering. The locusts look like horses, verse 7, and the riders were prepared for battle. On their heads, they, that is the demons, wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Demonic angels resemble human beings. Their crowns of gold upon their heads are in the Greek stephanos, that is, crowns of victory. And these crowns reflect their demonic dominion over mankind. They're like princesses. A prince having a crown showing his authority over his subjects. And these demons are part of the devil's masquerade. All of them about 15 feet tall. They will be very impressive beings. Verse 8. Their hair was long and beautiful like women's hair. And their teeth were strong and deadly. Designed to tear flesh like lion's teeth. Now... Remember, this is a caricature of how God is representing to John what this demonic appearance of the devil and his angels is not only what it looks like, but what it is all about, what the purpose and mission really is. Verse 9, these demons had breastplates like breastplates of iron. That is, nothing man-made could penetrate them or hurt them. Mankind will not be able to hurt these demons. 
and the sound of their wings as they fly was powerful, like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. So you can imagine that as the devil and his forces approach earth, the sound of their arrival, the sound of their wings as they fly, will shake the ground and cause the people of earth to run for cover. Verse 10, because God can speak volumes with a single caricature, these demons were represented to me as though they had tails and stings like scorpions, and in their tails they had the power to torment people for five months. Verse 11, they, that is the demons, they had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollyon, which means destroyer. Okay, this, these are the first 11 verses of Revelation 9. Let's ask some questions. Why is Lucifer, the, king, the angel king of the abyss, called a destroyer? If you understand the full cup principle, you already know the answer to this question. When a nation or a group of people reach a point where extended mercy does not produce a redeeming effect, God always empowers and divinely commissions a destroyer. A destroyer sent on a divine mission cannot be thwarted. Remember, they thought Jerusalem couldn't fall when the Romans came to destroy it. Remember, they, Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, thought Babylon couldn't fall. But God sent a destroyer on a divine mission. Destroyers may be called upon by God to impose redemptive judgments, or the destroyer may be required to impose totally destructive judgments. And when Satan comes in the fifth trumpet, he is sent as a destroyer to impose totally destructive judgments upon the earth. He's going to destroy the earth. Let's go back and look at an example from Jeremiah of what I'm saying about a divinely appointed destroyer. Jeremiah 4, verse 5. God said to Jeremiah, Announce in Judah, and proclaim in Jerusalem, and say, Sound the trumpet throughout the land. Cry aloud and say, Gather together. Let us flee to the fortified cities, the cities of refuge. Verse 6. Raise the signal to go to Zion. Flee for safety without delay. For I am bringing disaster. Who? I am bringing disaster. From what direction? From the north, even terrible destruction. Divine destruction always comes out of the north. God takes full responsibility by saying, I am bringing disaster. A lion has come out of his lair. A destroyer of nations, a destroyer of nations has set out. He has left his place to lay waste your land. Your towns will lie in ruins without inhabitant. Jeremiah 4.16, tell this to the nations, proclaim it in Jerusalem, a besieging army is coming from a distant land. Raise a war cry against the cities of Judah. Verse 18, your own conduct and actions have brought this upon you. This is your punishment. How bitter it is, how it pierces to the heart. Verse 22, Jeremiah 4, 22. My people are fools. They do not know me. They are senseless children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil. They do not know how to do good. Jeremiah 5, 15. O house of Israel, declares the Lord, I am bringing a distant nation against you, an ancient and enduring nation, a people whose language you do not know, whose speech you do not understand, Verse 16, their quivers are like an open grave. All of them are mighty warriors. 
Verse 17, they will devour your harvests and food, devour your sons and daughters. They will devour your flocks and herds. They will devour your, your vines and fig trees. With the sword, they will destroy the fortified cities in which you trust. Verse 8, 25, 8, Therefore the Lord Almighty says this, Because you have not listened to my words, I will summon all the peoples of the north, and my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, declares the Lord, and I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants and against all the surrounding nations. Through him I will completely destroy them and make them an object of horror and scorn and an everlasting ruin. My point here is that Nebuchadnezzar, king of ancient Babylon, was empowered by God as a destroyer to destroy and to devour Israel, his own people, because of their rebellion against him. You understand that, I hope. You see that very clearly. In a parallel way, Lucifer, king of modern Babylon, will be empowered by God to destroy earth because of its rebellion. Lucifer's title is given in Hebrew and Greek because God wants everyone, Jew and Gentile alike, Hebrew and Greek, to know who the destroyer actually is, the Antichrist, who the Antichrist actually is, and why he will be released upon mankind. The devil will be released from the abyss or the spirit realm where he's now confined to bring the drama of sin to a close. The Antichrist and his angels will be on earth 445 days, a little more than a year. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Paul says, Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day, that is the second coming, the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, will not come until the rebellion occurs. Until the rebellion occurs. Paul predicts there will be a worldwide rebellion before Jesus appears. This rebellion will be in the form of man's response to the everlasting gospel which the 144,000 will present during the Great Tribulation. And this great rebellion against the gospel will ultimately bring the work of the 144,000 to a standstill. The gospel will stall. And when this happens, the man of sin, or the man of lawlessness, will be revealed. The man doomed to destruction. Do you remember in Daniel 8.23, in the latter part of their reign, when rebels have become completely wicked, a stern-faced king, a master of intrigue, will arise. Daniel and Paul are talking about the same thing, the physical appearing of the devil. When rebels have become completely wicked, when the gospel has stalled and the work of the 144,000, only 890 days old, they can go no further. Everyone has pretty much made a decision. God releases a destroyer to force people into making their final decision. Notice what Paul says, verse 4. He, that is the man of sin, the devil, he will oppose every religion. He will oppose every religion. And he will exalt himself over and above everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Now, 
many people misinterpret this verse. They think that Paul is talking about the devil sitting in a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, and that is not what Paul is talking about. Remember, the devil is opposed to everything that is called God. He will oppose and exalt himself above everything that is called God or is worshipped. So he will not be a friend of the Jews. He will not be a friend of the Catholics. He will not be a friend of the Protestants or the Hindus or the Muslims. He will claim to be God above all. Paul is simply saying, when he sets himself up in God's temple, Paul is saying that the devil will exalt himself to the highest, sets himself up in the highest position possible as Almighty God. Verse 5, don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And you, now you know what is holding him back. What is holding the devil back? Jesus Christ so that he may be revealed when? At the proper time, which is prior to the second coming. Paul goes on in verse 7, For the secret or the hidden power of rebellion against God is already at work on the earth. We know that. But the one who holds back this rebellion until it's time for the great rebellion where the gospel is presented clearly and the people of earth reject it. But the one who now holds this all back, total rebellion, is Jesus. And he will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. Jesus is standing in the way, interceding between guilty man and the wrath of God. And when the corporate intercession of Jesus ends, the censor will be cast down and the wrath of God will begin. And then during the great tribulation, particularly the fifth trumpet, the lawless one, that is the man of sin, will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will over overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one, verse 9, he will deceive the wicked. The devil will be glorious and awesome in appearance, and his true character will eventually come out because he is evil, and his words and actions will be in accordance with the work of Satan, which is deceptive always. And the de devil will prove his divine claims through displays of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish. They perish because they heard and refused to love the truth and so be saved. Notice carefully, they perish because they refused. You can't refuse something you haven't heard. You can't refuse something you don't understand. The wicked will perish because they heard the gospel, refused to love the gospel, and so be saved. Verse 11, for this reason, God himself sends a destroyer. He sends a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but delighted in wickedness. Wow, that's a lot to say. But I want you to understand that God not only permits the devil to physically appear during the Great Tribulation, God empowers the devil to destroy the earth. We'll continue our study in just a moment.